Sal Licata here, a pleasure and an honor to be joined by not only my personal favorite head coach of all time growing up an Atlanta Falcons fan, but the best coach in the history of the Atlanta Falcons. And Coach Smith, I think that's saying something as we're joined by Mike Smith. When you think about it, there are 32 franchises and you are, and this is not my opinion, this is a fact, you are the greatest head coach in one of those franchises in Atlanta Falcons history. That, that has to mean a ton to you. Well, I appreciate that, Sal. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm honored to have had the opportunity to coach the Atlanta Falcons and be involved in the NFL for 20 plus years. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a, spe- a special fraternity and a special place, but thank you very much. Now, I, I want to, you're a great example, coach, of what goes on with these hirings, right? Especially from a fan slash media perspective. You know, there's seven openings right now in the NFL. So I want to get into that with you, but, From my perspective as a fan, before you got hired in 2008, and we could set the scene a little bit, I'm sure everybody knows, you know, Michael Vick was thrown in jail, the face of the franchise, the guy that was running the team, I don't even want to call him a coach, but he quit, Bobby Petrino quit the team, they were in complete disarray, and you're not a name that was the most sexy out there. I don't even know if I would call you, I mean, you were a good coordinator with the Jacksonville Jaguars. I don't know if you were the hot coordinator because I remember thinking, Mike Smith, who's this guy? And then I saw your opening press conference and I immediately fell in love. And then I saw it translate immediately. But speak to, Coach, the idea of teams hiring hot coordinators to be their head coach and how that's gone so wrong almost all the time here with the NFL circling hires. Well, it's a, it's an imperfect science in terms of hiring, hiring coaches in the NFL. Uh, and I think there's trends that come and go and, and you don't really know what is the driving force to why a guy is hired. Uh, you know, and I can speak from, you know, from my experience in 2008, uh, I was very surprised because I wasn't, quote, the hot coordinator and had an opportunity to uh, interview. And when you get an opportunity to interview, you just go in there and uh, put your best foot forward and, and talk about how you see the future of a, of, an, of a franchise. And it just happened to be a fit. And uh, we're going through this right now, Sal, with all these changes that are happening in the NFL. And nobody really knows. Who's going to get these jobs? Uh, you know, and I know it's, there's a, a, a subculture that follows it religiously and is watching every day to see who's the new hot candidate. Nobody really knows except the decision makers. And there's so many moving parts and it's hard to put that puzzle together. And, uh, it's not an exact science. There's probably more failures than there are successes. And I was very lucky and fortunate to be what the Atlanta Falcons at that point in time were really looking for. And, uh, you know, Arthur Blank took a chance and Thomas Dimitrov took a chance and we had a good run there for, you know, for a while. And, you know, it's in the NFL, it's not for long. So you got to take advantage of uh, all your opportunities. Well, you're being a little modest here, Coach. And before we get into some of the current openings and what you would look for if you're a head coach, you know, look, looking for one of these jobs, you personally, I, I just don't, I don't get it. A, I don't think it was fair to let you go or to fire you after two losing seasons after all that you did. I mean, you took over not only one of the worst situations possible, as I mentioned, with Vic going to jail and the head coach quitting. This is a franchise that never had back-to-back winning seasons prior to your arrival. So I think that was one aspect of it. But the fact that you turned them around, how did you, and, and did it in the way that you did, how the hell is it possible? I've never understood this. How have you got and not gotten another opportunity here? It does not make any sense to me. I know you came close, and I remember you being one of the finalists, I guess, for the Giants job, and we could get into that in a second. But how is it possible, Coach, that you have not gotten another opportunity here? Well, th- that that's uh, probably a million dollar question, not only for me, but for lots of you know lots of guys. Uh, you know, I think there's a shelf life for coaches. And, uh, you know, when that, when it's perceived in in the community or of the NFL that, uh, you know, there's, that's not what we're looking for and and it's not sexy hire or whatever, that's, you know, that's what happens. And, uh, 
I really appreciate what you're, you know, what you're saying, but we, you know, we're very proud of what we accomplished there in, uh, in, in Atlanta and have, uh, enjoyed the experiences of being a coach first and then having an opportunity to work in the NFL just tops it. You know, it's like putting the, the cherry on top of a, of a, of a nice ice cream sundae. So, uh, we are very fortunate to have been able to experience the things that we have. And when I mean we, I mean my family and I mean the people that I've had the opportunity to work with that have gone on to be coaches at other places and been very, very successful. And, uh, it's very fleeting in the NFL. Uh, I think what's happened in, in Philadelphia speaks volumes. Uh, two years ago, they won the world championship and today they're not a, the, the organization is not aligned from the head coach to the management and they decided to make a change. And I think that's probably going to be in vogue for a while. Uh, you know, they use the term NFL, not for long. And it's, uh, you know, it's getting that way more and more as each day passes. It is insanity though. And you personally were with an organization who, and look, I think Arthur Blank made a big mistake, but he's trying to bring stability and he had it with you. He finally had it. And I think that they went too based off of, and this is the media's fault and the fans fault as well for not paying attention to what was going on, a team that was disciplined, a team that had good character, a team that played hard, even in losing seasons, and looking at, oh, well, they're one and four in the postseason, instead of looking at it, and I'll tell you this, from a fan's perspective, the first year against Arizona, the loss, that happens. Rookie season for you and Matt Ryan, you played a tough game, you lose a playoff game, no big deal. I I look at it, and and in the second time, you had a great record, and you got smoked by Green Bay, but that was a team that was a buzzsaw. Ryan didn't play a great game. Aaron Rodgers went on to win the Super Bowl that year. The, The one loss I think was awful was the Giants' loss, and I was at that one in New York, and a giant just took it to you, and you went for it on fourth down all the time, and you get beat, whatever. But overall, Coach, you look at those games, and I know losing to the Niners, which also I was down there for, flew down to Atlanta to see, losing to the Niners in the championship game, okay, that hurt, but overall, the 1-4 and four record on paper is a lot worse than it was in reality. Do you think you were unfairly judged based on that playoff record alone as opposed to the big picture, the foundation that you built, and the consistency that you had once you took over that Atlanta Falcons team? Well, again, as I said earlier, we're, we're very proud of what we accomplished uh, there in Atlanta on a number of fronts. Uh, not only the win loss record in the regular season and, you know, what we were able to, you know, to do in the community as an organization and as a team. Uh, it was a fractured fan base, uh, when we, you know, when we got there and I think we pulled it, you know, we were able to pull it together. Uh, and again, I think that every, you know, every team and every organization when they have a hire has a shelf life. And, uh, you know, the, that's what I think is, happens in, in all these uh, organizations, in all these cities, uh, you know, you're going to be judged by wins and losses as a, as a head football coach. And uh, it gets magnified in the, you know, in, in the postseason and you can't make excuses. Your record is what it is. Uh, you know, you can sit there and I've had people tell me, well, if you beat the Falcons when, when Smitty was the, the head coach, you went on to win this, you know, win yeah, the really. Super Bowl. Yeah, or, or play in the Super Bowl. Every day, everybody we lost to ended up going to the Super Bowl that 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 season. So, uh, you know, it's just a you know, it's a fickle business. I mean, it's a it's a great industry. Uh, you know, it's very entertaining for you know for fans. And uh, I'm glad that I had the opportunity to be a part of it. And as I mentioned earlier, more importantly, I had the opportunity to be in the the profession of coaching because uh, those uh interactions that you have and those relationships that you build they they don't end when the season ends they they go on forever and ever Talking with former Atlanta Falcons head coach, longtime NFL coach Mike Smith, the greatest head coach in the history of one of the 32 franchises in the league with the Atlanta Falcons. How about coach the philosophy of hiring these guys based off of X's and O's, who's the next great offensive genius or the defensive guru, as opposed to actually hiring 
a head coach. I mean, you see it all the time now with quarterback whispers. Is there such thing as a quarterback whisper? Give me your thoughts on on teams putting what seems to be an emphasis on guys who could either develop the quarterback or just X's and O's as far as offensive scheme as opposed to hiring a good head coach. Well, it's it's interesting that you ask that. This has become a, a, a quarterback driven league. I don't think there's any doubt. Uh, you know, we've just experienced the most productive offensive season in the history of the of the NFL, and I think it's going to continue to trend that way. Uh, so, the, you know, the it, and when it's a quarterback driven league, you definitely want to. You know, a lot of people believe that you have to have someone that can work with the quarterback closely you know that is you know a perception that I think everybody sees right now and I don't know if it's the best thing for team building you know when you win it's easy to build a team uh you know when you're developing a team and growing a team up that's a whole different set of circumstances that you that you have to deal with and I think that's the, you know, that's the thing that, that, that happens. You know, there's a lot of changeover. There's a lot of, uh, moving parts every year. This year it's, uh, you know, it's even more so than, than most. But I think on the average, you're going to see a, uh, a change at the head coach, coaching positions, usually somewhere between six and 10. I mean, you can just count on it. So as, I, as I've mentioned many times, the NFL stands for not for long and, uh, you know, you just got to enjoy the time that you're there. And, and, you know, there's lots of people that want to coach forever. And then there's a handful of people that understand they've had a great run and they want to go do something else. Do you agree, though, with that philosophy, Coach, of hiring a guy based on their offensive scheme or the fact that they... I mean, you were a defensive guy. You took, at the time, a rookie quarterback before rookie quarterbacks were having immediate success. You worked together with Matt Ryan as well as any combination you, you, that possibly can. So uh, you don't need to be an offensive guy. Do you agree with that philosophy that we've gotten to today where it seems that they're hiring people based on their relationship with the quarterback or X's and O's as far as offensive scheme? Well, I think that's the trend right now. Uh, there's, you know, as, as, a, as a football coach, uh, having studied the game and been part of the game for a long time, uh, it's, a, you know, it's still a team game. You've got to have, on the offensive side of the ball, you've got to be able to control the line of scrimmage. You've got to be able to uh, run, be able to, to have an effective running game for the most part. And I think what's happened is, is the game is becoming more of a wide open game, more like basketball. <laughs> uh, you know, it's spacing. It's not, you know, it's not the game that it was 10 years ago. Uh, you know, and that's obvious by the way that, uh, offenses are preventing, are presenting formations and personnel groupings. Uh, you know, it's changed immensely. Three wide receivers in the ball game at one time is the predominant uh, personnel grouping that you're going to face. And so it is, everybody looks at, at it from an offensive perspective right now. And yes, offense sells tickets, but I still believe this, you've got to be able to play some defense. And, you know, some of the teams in the, in the playoffs got some really strong defenses. And I think that they're going to fare well as we, you know, as we move down, towards the you know the Super Bowl there's going to be some hey, there's going to be some defensive plays that are going to make a difference in these playoff games this weekend and as we move towards the Super Bowl there in Tampa. But the head coach openings, right? There's so many of them. You're a guy who, I mean, I, I know you're retired now, but let's just say you're looking for one of those seven openings. What do you value most? Is it ownership? And I know it's some kind of combination, but if you had to rank the number one aspect of getting into uh, an organization to become a head coach, is it the quarterback possibilities? Is it the ownership? What are you looking at as far as the best situation putting yourself into to be the head coach there? Well, I think everybody has different ideas of what the ideal situation would be as a as a head coach. Uh, and I do think that the, you know, everybody wants to be successful and wants, you know, wants to, to win. And I think you, the first thing that you would want to look at would be what is your situation at the quarterback position? 
be, simply because this is a, as I mentioned earlier, it is a quarterback driven league and you've got to have someone that can, uh, move the, you know, move the football down the field, uh, throw, you know, throw in the football because it is a pass, it has become a passing league. You, you, you might look at the second thing is, okay, what, you know, what is the, the stability and what has been the track record of, of the ownership in terms of, uh, their hiring cycles? Because you want to be able to have continuity and build a, you know, and build a program. And are you going to have, you know, ample time to do that? Doesn't seem like that's the, you know, the case right now in terms of the, you know, the turnover that we see in the National hmm. Football League. But those would probably be the, you know, the two things. And then the ability to put together a, a strong staff, you know, and some, you know, some people may pass on a, you know, pass on an opportunity because they can't put together a staff. It's not just one person. It's just not the head coach. Uh, the success that you have is, is going to be dictated by the people that you have around you. And uh, you've got to have a strong staff. And I think that was one of the things that was one of my strengths and one of the things that we did well is we were able to put together a staff that would be able to work together and uh, put together, you know, put together the vision that comes from the own from ownership down to the general manager to the head coach to what it's supposed to look like. Now, obviously, those things change quickly in the NFL. And I think that's why there's so much turnover in the NFL over the last 10 years. And you guys had such great staffs and such great teams that people kept picking them off. I mean, how many different offensive coordinators, it seemed, year after year, you had to keep changing. You mentioned before, Coach Smith, about the defense um, always you know, winning out, or maybe not always, but obviously being a huge factor. You look at the divisional round here coming up this weekend, are you valuing a defensive team more so than some of the high-powered offenses that we've seen now down to the final eight in this, in this uh, divisional round? Well, I really believe that there's going to be some defense this weekend that is going to be a big surprise. I really believe that. Uh, you know, if you look at what what's going on in the in this round of eight, there's a lot of damn good quarterbacks playing. There's no doubt about it. Uh, you know, and you know, on one side in the on the AFC, it's the young guns. On the NFC side, it's the it's the old guys. It's the gray beard. So to me it's going to be an interesting weekend to watch NFL football because you're going to you're, you're going to see the you know the the curtain going down on potentially three of the you know three Hall of Famers and now definitely three Hall of Famers but guys that uh, you know changed the game in the last fifteen to you know fifteen to twenty years and uh, you know on the other side you're seeing four young young quarterbacks the new wave quarterback that not necessarily is the true pocket passer, but is going to be someone that has to be accounted for in the run game. And that's the big trend uh, that I think is, is going on. And it's going to be fun to watch um, from the AFC to the NFC, just the way it's, you know, it's shipped down in terms of uh, the quarterbacks that are playing in the playoffs this week. You have any team in particular that you think jumps out of you as far as, or you could give me a representative uh, what you think the Super Bowl matchup's going to be. You don't have to get into necessarily predictions here, but you have any teams that you believe in that will go to the Super Bowl this year out of the final eight? Oh gosh, you know when you're when you're down to this, uh, you know to the to the uh, round of eight, you're you know you're not playing uh, poor football teams. You're playing teams that uh, have made it through a very grueling season, especially this season. It's been so different for not only the players and the coaches, but for the fans and how we are consuming the game. Uh, so I, you know, I think it's going to be very uh, unpredictable. I really do. Uh, you know, you, you can't, you know, you can't discount, uh, you know, the old guys and, and, and you know, and Rogers, uh, Brady and Drew Brees. And, uh, I think you're going to, you know, you're going to see uh, 
some fine football being played this weekend. Uh, you know, last weekend was a was a fun weekend uh, to watch three football games on Saturday, NFL games on 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 Saturday back to back to back that uh, are go win or go home was was you know just exciting for uh, for the fans on Saturday and Sunday. I was glued to the TV. Uh, surprised at some of the outcomes, but nothing surprises me in the NFL. Yeah, you, you never know. Game to game, week to week, obviously everything changes up. Coach, tell me a little bit about X Tech here. The shoulder pads, custom shoulder pads. I know it's probably been difficult with COVID, as is everything else nowadays. But how about your work here with X Tech shoulder pads? Well, I I became aware of X Tech shoulder pads uh, about four years ago, and uh, I saw a demonstration. Uh, actually at the American Football Coaches Association uh, clinic. Uh, I believe it was in Nashville, Tennessee, and it just blew me away with uh, what these guys, and when I mean these guys, Bob Bodrick and Ted Monica, have done with uh, the development of, of shoulder pads. You know, we've got to make the game safer, and we're doing things, uh, to do that, you know, in terms of, of, of concussion protocols, helmets, footwear, you know, we've done all kinds of studies, the NFL has, but we haven't really dove into shoulder pads, uh, you know, and it's another area that we can keep our players safe. And the tech, you know, the technological advances that they have put into their pads in terms of the foam that they're using, in terms to, into the leveraging of it, and it's very comfortable for players to use. It's the number one pad in the National Football League right now, and most of the elite college programs are wearing it at Oklahoma, Auburn, Notre Dame, Ohio State, Oregon. Uh, so it's a, you know, it's a passion play for me in terms of, uh, you know, trying to make the game better and make the game safer. Uh, and if you're interested in finding out more about it, because it's not just for NFL or college players, it's for the young players that are in high school, junior high, and playing in Pop Warner. You can go to xtechpads.com or you can follow them on xtech, at xtechpads on Instagram. Uh, and I think you will find out in a very quick amount of time how much better these pads are and why everybody in the NFL is wearing them. Uh, yeah, make you know, sure you check in, that out. Yeah, you need uh, you, your, your listeners need to check it out. Uh, you know, coaches, I would recommend that you you know that you you get in you get on the site and look at it. And they have done some very unique things in this period of COVID. Um, they have a, they have now put together a di- digital database which uses years of data based on X Tech fits, and they can actually fit your players without it coming to your facility. They can custom fit a set of shoulder pads and have them to you. And I've heard of story after story in college football this year and in the NFL where guys have switched over in the middle of the season. And in one week's time, they've been able to get the pads from x They're 100% American made. So uh, there's no shutdowns and no supply chain issues. It is a really cool company. It's eight years old. Ted Monica and Bob Broderick, they are way ahead of their time in terms of the development for the safety of our players with the X Tech pads. And make sure you check that out, especially the way the game is going. As you said, that um, you know, it, we're, we're emphasizing safety here. So make sure you check out the X Tech pads. A couple more for you, Coach. You know, I'm a huge fan. I mean, you can tell by now uh, that I'm a huge fan of yours, and I've just listened to your book twice. You went in the locker room first, you and John Gordon, and you know, I, I just. It bothers me, Coach, that you didn't get another interview, or that you didn't get another chance. First of all, it bothers me that you got fired from the Falcons, number one. Number two, it bothers me, and it also shows to me the stupidity around the league that you didn't get another opportunity. Do you think, having learned what you did in your first chance as a head coach with the Falcons, that you would have been even better off the second go-round? Because I'm a big believer in that. Guys who get fired or learn the first time, getting another opportunity, being even better and can build off of what they learned the first time. You think you would have been better that second go around? Yeah, I believe so. I really do. But I, you know, I do know this, it, you know, the, the, the game is changing in terms of the hiring, uh, you know, young, they're going with younger, younger up and coming offensive uh, 
coaches. So, uh, you know, that's just the, you know, that's, you know, no, no hard feelings, you know, at all. Uh, we, we are very proud of what we accomplished, Sal. So, but hey, Sal, I have got a, I have got another, I got another call here. So if we need to, okay, coach, we can, we can wind yeah. this up. It'd be great. You can. No problem, Coach. I appreciate you a few minutes. Good luck with everything. Enjoy the fishing. Enjoy your time with your wife and your family. Uh, it was a pleasure watching you, and good luck with the X-Tech pads here, and enjoy the football this weekend. I'm going to enjoy it, Sal, and I appreciate talking to you. You are very, very informative, and you know the game. You you know, you know understand the game, and it's been a pleasure, and I hope I get a chance to talk to you here again in the future. Love to, hey, love to reconnect.